The consortium began in 2013 when the local hospital and health service relinquished its HAC contract back to the Commonwealth and there were some 4,000 clients associated with that contract. So some of the consortium um, original members were organisations that came to us and asked us to form a collaborative so that they could actually bid for those services. One of the things I think that came out early in the piece was that um, we didn't want to just do the same thing as was done before. We, we had this real commitment that we were going to overachieve. It gave us the capacity to, to be part of a, a collective approach to tendering, which was fantastic. Um, but I also think that we, we all collectively started to look at the greater good. But coming into the consortium, we basically realised that every service provider has so much to offer, which we were not aware of. We found out a lot more about each other. Um, we realised that the clients were able to benefit a lot more. So we put together a, a group based on um, their philosophy around service delivery being very client-centred, that they were able to deliver to special needs groups, that there was good geographical coverage of our region and also that they were very willing um, to collaborate and open to sharing information amongst each other in what is you know, traditionally a very competitive sector. And I think which service provider has something different to offer. I think that's the, 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 the consortium model, I think, and it's one that works successfully. What we found absolutely useful for us as a service provider is to have partners that provide services over a diverse range. So um, we've got um, call providers, we've got Indigenous providers, we've got providers that you know, focus on mental health. There's clients, that, there's uh, services that um, deal with high, you know, much higher needs clients than, than we might deal with. We also include uh, representatives of carer and consumer groups, peak bodies, advocacy organisations, in that it, it adds a, a dimension to our ability to plan services based on what we know are consumer needs. As well, you know, we've, we've been um, uh, working together on, on on issues that we all share, like transition, the clients transitioning out of hospital back to home mm -hmm. or out of um, rehabilitation back into home. I, I think by bringing people to the table and having an environment where people can actually discuss things, and if you've got an issue, be able to draw that issue out and, and then, then come up with a solution um, was, was really helpful. The PHN took on board the organising of the forums um, in the Brisbane North um, region. Um, with these changes, I think it allowed us to meet with all the other service providers, the ones even outside of the consortium. This model also drives efficiency. Um, we very much looked at um, the region and looked at um, a place-based type approach where we were being efficient with the delivery of our services in particular areas within the region. Within its first year, the consortium exceeded all of the government output targets and the efficiency gains that were achieved were able to be uh, invested into providing additional services. From, from the early stages as well there was that commitment to you know through PHN to the, the quality of the services and so there's a real focus on the clients um, and it was borne out by um, the, University, uh, the Queensland University of Technology um, interviews and, um, and, and report that came out of the process. The um, Queensland University of Technology conducted a two-year um, evaluation project of the consortium. The QUT evaluation report found that um, we achieved close to 30% efficiency gains under the consortium model. In the transition from the hospital and health service to the consortium, the client satisfaction rate remains steady. The benefit to providers in being a part of the consortium was found to be um, around information sharing, networking, the um, being able to complement each other's services without fear of um, losing their clients to other services. The logistics, I don't think we would, would have been possible prior to the group coming together. We shared 
capacity, we shared, shared recruitment information. It certainly tested um, our staff and it tested our systems, our processes. I think we've all seen our, organi our organisations individually grow significantly coming out of this process. Um, and I think that everyone's pretty proud of what's, yeah. what's been achieved. It's not saying that there isn't still a very strong competitive yeah. uh, approach in this industry, um, but I think um, we, we, we feel much more like partners than competitors mm. now.